Oh, I've streamed right, There now. Uh, is that working? Here, if I can. I unmute this tab, then I'll, I'll get double audio for, for a moment, but then I'll check if uh, it's working or not. I unmute this tab, then I'll get it is. double audio okay. for a moment, but then I'll check if. Right. Okay. All right. We have everything going. Uh, hey there, Nash. How's it going? Hello. Hello. Right. Um, okay. Hello, everybody. Today we are first dojo we've done for a while. Um, as, as as per usual, it's extremely well prepared and everything is going to go completely smoothly. Um, we're going to be covering today some moments from the Dominion series, uh, which you might not have spotted beforehand, um, which I thought were really nice clips, really nice moments, um, can all with some educational properties. I just prepared this uh, thing of various different clips for the broadcast people, but I thought I could reuse some of it to show off some cool moments so well jump right in you know i've got a whole big old list of some of them uh big old list of clips jump right in with this what first one here which is from the uh first we'll start off with eu and uh, some of the winners semi-finals i guess the, the the first ones um of which is uh oh, say this was nemesis versus ecg all right, so we will go straight to it. Uh, this one I labelled with uh, "Great Control and Revenge Awareness" by ECG. So there's something you don't see all that often when you're you're matchmaking in matchmaking. But um, I'll probably mute these so that they don't you don't have to hear the. Oh, great. One really not able to do much. All right, so here we're in, in a. Get KV oh, up against okay. the wall, but it's KV. Not muted. Right, so here we are in this 2v2 scenario on point C, which is quite a common scenario to see. And just here, th just there was the point that I wanted to bring up here. We have Baron over here. Um, can you see my pointer on the screen, by the way, guys? Is it showing up? Yep. Perfect. Yeah, right, you've got yeah. Baron over here on the... We have a, a Goki and Zhenhu versus an, a Raider and Baron on the Shinobi. They have health advantage, and but they are... And it is their point as well, so they want to kill these guys quickly and get Defender renown, but they don't want to allow for rotations from there's a, there's a sort of a JJ with enough health to be bothersome in the corner. Um, and you can see here they start off a gank, and Nature accidentally uh, goes for a I think he goes for a guard break rather rather than wasn't quite quite well timed enough to get to confirm the heavy. He should have got let the heavy go then, because the kick would have confirmed it. So he faints to the guard break, and rather than Baron just feeding revenge here, nice awareness, and he and he faints his heavy. So that's just a a nice something that we don't see very often when you're regular match when you're playing matchmaking. Um, is people paying attention to the amount of revenge people have got on their bar? If he had let that that heavy go, it wouldn't have been confirmed. Ashcroft would have got revenge, and this fight would have gone very differently. So as it is, then nature manages to like ra raises uh, well, Baron's tag expire. Nature gets the kill, and then off-screen Baron kills Tote Mind, and they get the point. So although another nice little bit of de little detail here is how seeing Ashcroft seeing that they're going to lose this fight backs off the point, and when when he's he's off the point. Doesn't and he dies. He doesn't feed any defender renown, so that's another nice little detail there that we'll see quite a lot of in in competent fights. People paying attention to revenge tags and getting off points to not feed defender renown. Okay, so the next, next any anything you want to add to that, you guys? All good. All right. Hello, noodles. Noodles is yelling at me. I I just gave you snacks. So, all right. Did she escape the prison? No, she's just. I, I, didn't, I didn't even bother. I didn't even bother imprisoning her. I think I might. I might have to. She continues being um, in her antisocial behaviour. But we'll go back and start off the next clip here. So this is in the next match. It's quite hard to pull a time from this one because it's, this this all happens very quickly. Um, so start off. We're in a 
We're in a fight in mid. Things about even between extra cool gachas, actually slightly in the lead. Uh, Nemesis, last bit behind. There's a the camera is spectating this 1v1 between Ashcroft and Baron again. In fact, the this set of 1v1s happened an awful lot during the tournament of the Shinobi versus the, the Zhan Hu. Um and you'll see that there's one kill goes for extra cool gachas here. Low health in general elsewhere. And just here, during this team fight. There was a, the Nemesis made the call to go for the push, and you can see that the health totals are actually pretty low everywhere. It's pretty much immediately as they got the execute on, um, I guess that was Nature over there, they decided to go for the push. Really, so, yeah. yeah, so you can see here that we've got the Goki is on a lot of health, um, Raider's got a big health advantage as well, and because they push back, they start this push that also basically collapses extra cool gatches because they see that, oh god, they're going after them, we need to do something about this push. They end up panicking, and the Goki dies, and off-screen Chloe's about to come in as well, also ends up dying, and they get this, they get the point. Um, with enough time, I think, they manage to heal up fully, because Tote goes and body blocks to make sure nobody comes in. The, comes in. Um, so this was an excellent, excellently timed push there. So we, it all happened so quickly, we'll, we'll watch, it, watch it again. Take it back. It's also nice to, uh, to see that people listen to calls. Yeah. Like there was no question and probably anything. People actually went for it. It was called yeah. out. Yeah. I mean, people they might have discussed it. it beforehand because you can see as this fight is going on, they're actually pretty low in general. Overall, the health lead here, you would say Nemesis is behind. But then the Goki got the execute and managed to pull off his long execution. And Barak probably or Totemai would have said, as soon as the execute happens, go push that. Go push the points. As you can see, then Nova Miyoshi like immediately sees the barrack is peeling off and having to and they it's got moves to intercept and then just eats the damage from the goki behind him and just immediately is is bashed down and we see baron going to the going to the point to contest the capture but gets ganked quite well there nice that's just bash classic bash gank and then you know eventually if, yeah. if he's throwing attacks you're gonna he's gonna eat damage nice guard break there again on recovery um allows them to get get the point in and this i think was pretty much the turning point for this match but it, i just i wanted to like to really clarify here with why this push was so smart as well a lot of people play when they're playing again playing matchmaking um you'll see them kill enemies and then go to push the point but actually this push here was the opposite of that the only there was only one enemy dead on extra cool gatches it's just the health totals were enough that nemesis calculated they could win this push and they wouldn't have people coming off respawn. Exactly, so, because uh, if you kill someone, you basically put yourself on a timer. You only have this amount of time until that person respawns and comes back to the point. And if you haven't killed that person, it's probably going to be a never-ending fight on that point that you just pushed. Yeah, and you feed Defender Renown if you die on it. So it's all all in all, it's a bad idea to be having an endless fight. And you've got about 20 seconds from killing a person to have them show up. Um, to contest a spawn essentially because you've got 12 seconds of them dying about 8 seconds of them running around to get there um, a longer if you execute them of course and if it's a very big map but otherwise yeah pretty his noodle's going to be casting the march tournament uh, she, she probably will make an appearance yeah <laughs> um, we can't really do anything about her having making an appearance so I guess yeah, again just a really nice push there and something to bear in mind when you are when you are in your matches again, as well as like the fact they pushed before everyone's dead, it also helped them win the team fight because the, the fight in mid was going kind of, I would say, kind of badly. We just saw Setmix, who's on the, the JJ, just dies as well. They were close, but it was it wasn't clearly in either one's favor. But because they then make the push off to one side, that extra gacha suddenly has to think, oh god, we need to intercept them going to capture our home point. Then they mess up their own defense and they're they're in the moment and then they all die. So something we see a, few, a lot of times in this tournament in particular, and I wouldn't say like Nemesis probably had the best pushes of any team, even though they ended up coming second, they had the best like ti best timed pushes. So again, this is going to be a little bit of a disjointed dojo. We're kind of just, I'm mostly just like getting up little um. So basically, if anybody is wondering, the only reason why it's actually important that the um, 
uh, Nemesis team pushed through C is because as soon as he pushed through C, as he was saying, the whole team died, they had to respawn. Now the uh, extra cool Goshers have to completely restart and push on a certain point, so it becomes extremely difficult then to actually waver your points again. This is why it's very important to to, to get those points and, and the C point specifically. Right, I've muted you, um, Hership. Can you mute yourself when you're typing? So unless you're talking to ask, ask a question, um, mute yourself up. Otherwise, we can hear your keyboard and stuff, and it's distracting for, for people. Thank you very much. All right, so on to the next clip. So yeah, it's going to be a bit disjointed. Um, but you know, if you've got any questions, just let us know. Um, like A lot of these are going to be... I've got some random clips from... Uh, that were most... Um, I originally did this for, for the, sort of an, an end movie, so we've got lots of... Uh, comedy moments like this double everybody gets drop attacked claw manages to survive but gets drop attacked again so, so not all of the clips are educational that i guess one is the, the the lesson you can learn from this one is don't guard break somebody yeah. when you're right just showed up in the chat as well by the way yeah oh claw did yeah <laughs> nice <laughs> good time, yeah. didn't mean to be uh showing showing off uh, you dying here but uh, you know, it happens. Um, there's some good moments from, from, from you for you not dying as well. We have to show off in a bit. So uh, let's move on to this one, which is match four. We didn't have, as we'll probably get to later, um, we didn't have um, a, a series two and series three because um, Russian mind games were disqualified um, during the tournament, which is a bit, of a, a bit of a dramatic, but we will talk, maybe, maybe Freeze will talk about that later. Um, let's move on to yeah. the next one, which is a textbook Shinobi gank with good adaptation here. So we start off with Mina B has managed to get. Um, so Mina B had got, uh, had landed a uh, sickle rain. Oh, there it is again, the blood. Yeah, I know we're going to see a lot of that. <laughs> so Mina B lands a sickle rain, and he and they start off a gank here. So um, who's this person? Uh, Yogurt comes in, lands the his top heavy off the sickle rain. Mina B had did, if you notice, Mina B did two sickles, three. Did he do three or I think he did two? No, no did two. two. There we go, two. So that's confirms it starts off the gang and then realizes that if he did another bash to, if he did another bash to heavy, that would give enough revenge and to deny, like to not kill Claw, and also they were just about to go into breaking as well. So, um. Oh, actually, it's not the right side. To go to if you would want me to also clarify that um, the Shinobi not inputting a heavy after his bash is super important because yes. he doesn't input more revenge. And it's also very, very useful for the new pirate hero because oftentimes I found myself inputting the input when I was not used to it and, you know, giving revenge in MM matchmaking and all that stuff. Um, where eventually I started learning that you actually don't input it, it's actually more worth it because then you end up saving a lot of time and revenge gain. Yeah, so the classic gank with the Shinobi and, and Raider is just uh, heavy kick, Shinobi, Shinobi kicks, Raider heavies, Shinobi backflip kicks, flip heavies, flip kick, flip kick, etc. until they're dead, pretty much. Um, but here we saw, I wanted the, what I wanted to point out, was which was really good, is the adaptation of this gank. Seeing that the, that the amount of revenge they're about to feed, and then deciding to go for the more damaging option, because they know Claw's going to be Oh, we've got another clip of Claw dying, unfortunately. <laughs> um, Claw is going to be trying to dodge this kick, because if they miss time the heavy, he can dodge out of it. And actually, that might have been what even what happened. I'm not entirely sure. Um, let's see if... if Maybe if... just predicted that uh, the heavy is going to be late, or his bash is going to be late. So No, I think the bash would have been... Con further. I think the bash would have been confirmed there anyway. But you know that in this situation, whoever's... Claw will be mashing dodge mashing dodge because in case yogurt had got the timing wrong he would dodge the continued gank mina yeah. b knew that was going to happen and went for the for the the higher damage less revenge feeding undodgeable which and you'll see that nova the yogurt also fainted his heavy as well so again this is a really good communication here heavy he faints that heavy i should know he doesn't let go actually but did he did he let go it was weird I think he whiffed Oops. it. All right. See, he whiffed it. He whiffed it, okay. Well, see it one more time. Just this. 
yeah, you're right. It whiffed. It would have actually, ki- I think it would have killed him anyway, but um, just a, that was just a really nice example of a of adaptation on the fly for these ganks. A lot of the time when they're pulling off these ganks, they don't, they're not following exactly, you know, doing it exactly the same each time. They, ad- they adapt and do, do, do a slightly different one. And I think, actually, this is, well, we'll on that topic, we'll go on to this clip here, which we'll jump ahead one clip. This is another example of very similar kind of thing. So here we see Totem Barak, and they, they start off with the Goki hug gank. So Tote um, hugs off the hit stun of Barak's heavy. Barak lands a heavy on the opponent, but doesn't, doesn't land it quite in time and allows Claw to dodge the next hug. So here now, Claw is at half, is at two bars of health and half revenge. You can, you'll see after this, rather than going for the same gank again, which is a mistake a lot of people do. Um, yeah, Claw is. I just see Claw in the in chat as well. I'm sorry, we we've, we've literally picked three clips of you getting ganked. <laughs> it's not intentional. It's just it's just a coincidence. Um, but rather than going for the same hug gank again. You'll see that instead they adapt and he goes for a simple GB headbutt for the so instead of so then Tote sets up a faster gank which is the GB he GBs for Barak's zone first zone and headbutts for the second zone but to get the execution just to, just to ask when do we know when that came up because I only noticed this type of uh, GB in for Raider zone into Bash into Raider top heavy it only came up like between the the last chance qualifier, or did it? Was it in the last chance qualifier? And uh, then in the finals, you, you saw it a lot. I've, I don't I've know seen when it. was that when that became when I've seen that again. When did that become standard? I think that was that's a standard. That was back in. I mean, what, this this gank, which is a sort of GB heavy, and then bash for another heavy, is actually a very standard gank that have been... Uh, Warlord used to do that with Black Pride. Yeah, they did it with Tensei, BP you know? too. I was yeah. just curious because they, they kept doing it. They started doing it with uh, with Raider now. Yeah. Most of them. But, it, but it's, it's, it's an example of switching to a different, faster gank that does the amount... It, here, they, they saw how much health and revenge Claw had, and rather than going for a longer, slower gank, they go for a faster one, which kills quicker and... Um, sorry, I keep on seeing the stream open on the other side and then distracting myself. Um, one second. Which kills quicker and then is less likely to feed revenge. And also, you know, you don't need to pull off something as complicated when you are just, you know, uh, throwing out... Uh, when you just need to finish somebody off on two bars of health. So that was um, what I wanted to point out with that one. So that's 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 kind of nice anyway. I. Again, this is an example of communication and adaptation on the fly. They start off with one gank. They don't they don't execute it correctly, but then they very quickly adapt. The, the The call would have been made there. GB for my GB for heavy gank, and you can see actually that Claw made the right read um, to start off with. He goes for a light interrupt on Toti, so. He sees that, oh, they're probably going to do a GB gank. Toadie dodges to get in range, goes for one, and he's, he still gets hit by the, the second one. But it's, you're in that situation with half health, uh, with half revenge and very low health. It's, it's not one you're going to win very well. But here we also see that Ashcroft pushes A at the same time to distract and allow them to heal up on their point. Um, so that was quite a smart push as well. I think, he, I think he gets off point here, or no, he does die. little tangent, real quick. Yeah, go You ahead. think if you saw your own tag, because... Claw didn't know when is the tag running out. When mm. will the GB be coming? Because he just lied it just in anticipation. He couldn't know unless he looked at the timer, right? Yeah. So you think that would help? I mean, it would help. You think it would make ganking a lot harder? Like I don't these know. types of ganks I, that are being set up with GBs. I I genuinely don't know because because I also don't know how how they'd be able to show that because your own one doesn't flash because you can't. Tell if you've got more. Yeah, tags a different than kind of opponents. flash on the person, on the other person. Like this Maybe. person just applied attack to me. Possibly. I don't know. It would probably UI clutter. Yeah, and personally, I would rather they change um, revenge in general because I don't really like. Personally, I don't really like the whole playing around tags aspect. It's very artificial and very 
video gamey, if that makes any sense. It's it? also very easy to prevent anyone from getting revenge. Yeah, exactly. You just don't attack them for a few seconds, and they're still in the. I mean, what's this... the perfect example there just now? Yeah, right? well, yeah, that was a good example. Um, and... Also, that like the, the the timing of the GB from Toad was basically like stop stop flashing, and the GB straight came up. Oh, I didn't even yeah, see uh, that. On that's... MS. Also, when you have a guard on guard break, like you you do on purpose to counter guard break correctly, and you still eat a heavy to the face because it's just timed that way. Yeah, but I mean, there's there's not much else you can do about that. But yeah, let's have a look at the, let's have a look at the flashing here. So we're looking here for a claws. I mean, so that was when Toti last tagged him, waiting for revenge tags. Light. Yeah, you're right. It was absolutely perfectly timed. Yeah. Well. Well spotted, Freeze. I hadn't even noticed that one. Another another good detail. See, even when I've been looking at these clips, being like, oh, I'll find some good details to talk about on the Dominion series, there's always, there's always more to mention. So, deep game for Honor. All right, let's move on to the next clip, which is actually the one backwards. This is this is the example of not a well-timed, necessarily well-timed push, but well-timed understanding of when a push has gone wrong. So ECG here are pushing on to the home point of Nemesis, and... We'll go from the. We'll push. Go back from a little bit earlier. Well, let's go from the start of this push. Okay. So here, Baron goes starts going for the back up there. Another one's gone up the ladder. Nature's got a kill on Ashcroft. This is actually a pretty good opportunity to go for a for a push. Then, unfortunately, Miocian dies to to Tosi. But he gets ledged here, and then the call is made quite quickly that this is a bad push. We are. Ne they've gone from being in a favourable situation to being an unfavorable situation, and very quickly they just all peel off and go back to, you know, holding down mid and go. The Baron goes up to heal. They basically make sure they maintain map control rather than losing it by pushing into an unfavorable situation. So, again, I want to see, point out how quickly that was done. And here they got they they're playing what they what they call um what the NA players call playing connector, but I think this better term is interception um and they allow their other teammates to get the heal and come back in fast enough to stop these guys losing this team fight as well toti then takes the opportunity to go for a push but I, let's not talk about the whole map um just want to point out how that was a very good very well timed very good communication in seeing that this push has gone bad we need to abort this push like asap so let's get let's watch it from the beginning again. So. I think uh, also to notice that they lost, uh, they almost lost their home point there for a second. Yeah, or at but least that was they, their, the whole team went behind their home point. Yeah, I mean that's to be expected when they when they when they they've lost momentum on this fight, so they are in disadvantage. But rather than making that disadvantage worse themselves by sticking on their home point and all dying, for example, and feeding loads of defender renown, they see that okay, this push has gone bad. Basically, here when Miocian dies. They go, okay, right, this is now a, a situation where we are going to be unfavored. Let's all leave. And they do that without donating any more kills. So they, the, the enemy don't get any renown from this interaction, basically. Um, no, none of the ECG players die now until a little bit later, I think. So even here when nature gets ganked, they don't manage to do that, that, gank, that bash gank completely pro properly. And he gets rotations back from his allies who've just been healing up, um, as well as Miocian coming in to help with this team fight. So even though they get very low here, I don't think any of them actually die. I mean, nature dies. Yeah, okay, nature, nature dies, but Miocian manages to get out again. Anyway, that was the, that was the the point there. Um, just when when you commit to something, you don't necessarily commit to it forever. In you, the the situation changes. And the and the push that was once a well timed push becomes a bad bad push that you don't want to go for, and they pull it back and don't and don't commit to it, which is again very smart play. Um, all right, uh, here we have another one. We're going to talk now about some breaking strategies. So this was the end of the. This was match point in. Uh, the losers final one one to actual catches in Nemesis Esports. Um, Nemesis, this this whole breaking scenario went on for about four minutes. It was ridiculous. Um, I I could go from the beginning of it, but it was it was crazy. This whole fight was going on very very long time. ECG were down. A player had gotten executed. Um, 
But actually, the team fight in mid was going towards ECG. They had, they even though they were player down, you can see that the health totals really actually in favour of ECG here. Nemesis barracks low health. Um, Toti had just got a hug, I think. So, but but Barak basically, even he he could sense that this team fight wasn't going well. That politically low, lower bracket. It says losers final here, so I'm going to go with that. <laughs> Barak brings the team fight back. Basically, despite they've, they've not really got health advantage, they've got numbers advantage, which means they've got more opportunities to land drop attacks, essentially. And this is what happens here. He baited the, the, the fight that was going on back towards the home point. We actually saw Nature goes for a drop attack just before that. Um, so he, Nature goes to C point, presumably also seeing that this fight is going to go towards the drop attack zone, as it were, and goes for a drop attack himself. But it, him just coming off the, screen, off the corner there, he misses it. He just he just misses it on set mix, unfortunately. And then Ashcroft manages to get the drop attack there, turns this into a three v uh, a three v one, and then well we see the um, well doing really well in this one v one actually, but it's not going to be enough to survive. They pop the we have the phalanx pop, keep tote safe. Um, not that, it, that they could have done anything about it at this point after having lost their entire team, but again, just that was a a demonstration of good tactical awareness of how this fight in mid was going to start off with, realizing again, realizing it's not going great. So instead of pushing the like just before this, Barak whiffed his fire flask. Um, we did actually bait out the um, phalanx anyway. So here we see the fire flask comes out. But even though it missed, it was enough to bait the phalanx from Claw, who was actually off point. He was over. He was still fighting on A against Toti. But because um, they called out the fire flask, he then popped the phalanx to uh, to defend against that, even though it actually didn't need need to happen because the the flask actually missed everybody but hard to that's a very hard thing to do if you hear if you hear your teammates say flask and you're playing jj and you've got your phalanx ready you just pop your phalanx straight away um and really that was i think that was that was a good play from claw it was just a miscommunication for the rest of the from the rest of the team unfortunately yeah claw saying ah oh, this map yeah it was it was very tense you guys played amazingly well to keep it as um to keep in alive in breaking for as long as they did, because it ended up being like they they went from being I think it was four hundred to sort of nine hundred points and kept it, kept themselves in the match all the way up to the very end, and it was it was certainly very entertaining. Um, all right, next clip. So yeah, that was again another point of a uh, point. His tier four down here this early. This was how many minutes beforehand? All right. Another well-timed push here from Barak, from Nemesis and Barak. So again, we see the health situation here. Everybody's low. Oh, has got one dead. They've got a while for respawn. Other ones, uh, Sleepyhead, Obu, has got quite a lot of health. It's about to be ganked. The rest of the team are pretty low. Now is the time to push. And that is what Nemesis do very effectively here. Barak leaves this gank here because they can see that the gank's not going well. With the amount of revenge, the amount of health he's got left, and st and starts instead to push the home point, which had another death for oversleepers. They know that even if Sleepyhead wins this one v one, he won't get back to the home point fast enough to stop the contest, stop the capture. Um, Ashkov gets a nice execution, which gives him some more health as well. He manages to get up here, I think, before. Does he come and join Barak here or not? Yeah, here he does. Um, but because they've got this, because they have captured the point now, even if they die here, it doesn't really matter that much because they're not feeding Defender Renown. Well, I mean, if, it matters a little bit, but it was a really very well-timed push. To, and they look how how high a point gain they are, sort of how far ahead they are. Even though if they, even though Barak had died, she goes back to heal. I think Tote ends up getting ganked as well. Another. Both really good ganks here. Again, they manage tags pro appropriately. Um, don't feed revenge until tags have gone down, and then 
Mika's just lets uh, Mina be 1v1. Oh, hello, Noodles. To not, to not feed revenge there again. Again, good management. So even though this push push ends up with Nemesis dying and, and losing this fight on the home point, they can recapture it fairly quickly. I just wanted to again point out how well timed it was to get this get this early lead, a uh, big early lead in this, and which on a map like Sanctuary Bridge is very, very important. So the decision to make to push probably was made about about here, probably. When Ficus goes down, then Barak gets ready to leave. Gank's not going well, time to push. There we go. And then Themix goes back to heal his home point, because that's the least risk you want to heal. And Barak knows he's going to get pushed by these guys coming off respawn. So, all right, later, Kintama. Yeah, plays aren't committed for a long situation. Yes, it, a, that's something that I hope we get to see in the future Dominion series, especially if they do lands. Be able to have some, um, be able to hear team communications because I was privileged enough to actually be in the in the voice chats of some of these players because um, I was doing the age verification stuff with Natal, and we would we it was really interesting to hear the team's comms and when they decide to push, when they decide to wait, that kind of thing. Um, and a, lo a lot of it changes very, is very fast and something that we don't really necessarily appreciate just watching it. Um, what signs should one look for to make a push to the opponent's zone? So essentially, you, especially on this map where the rotation from their spawn to their zone is very, very fast, you don't want to be, you want to be going, you want to be going for a push when your opponents are still alive at low health so that you can win the fight on that point if you end up in a fight on that point, but not when they're dead and about to respawn and will arrive with you having just captured the point and being on low health, because then that doesn't really serve anything. So, a good, well, a good push here was, again, you see from, like, the decision was made probably about here, when one was dead, two were low, and everybody in Nemesis was low. So you you would see if you just saw this in this these health totals in isolation this wouldn't be a good push but because they like if you're in the middle of a team fight on Citadel Gate or uh, I don't know uh, if this was happening if this was a fight going on on their home point then obviously you wouldn't want to push but here they have a, a good opportunity to go for it let me quickly go back to the communication thing you said yeah. because usually players are the ones that come up with weird names for strategies right so it tends to influence the commentators. And I think it's something that can really catch the audience because uh, I'll bring a StarCraft example for uh, real quick. There's a thing where just Zerg walks their queens across the map and they started calling it the German taxi. So it's <laughs> completely weird names, but it catches on so much and like Twitch chat usually laughs about it. And I think stuff like that, would be really nice if we, like you said, online we can listen into the communication, and yeah, I think it's a really big benefit. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, I think it's, uh, I mean, it's unfortunately it's because of the online nature of these tournaments. It's harder for them to do, um, see see the players' perspectives, um, and hopefully we'll we'll have that change. But that's, I think, the biggest um, loss that of the to the Dominion series. Uh, other than other uh, well, one of the biggest losses to the broadcast at least. But um we'll see. Hopefully that will be improved in the future. I think it I think it will be. Um, all right, next one. So we have this is in the same match again, this is the um it's the grand finals actually. So this is about midway through the map. Oh no it's near the end actually. Um Nemesis have got this one they have one. There's there's somebody. Ashcroft is de dead. This guy is just here. Toti is executing, so he doesn't. He can't start res. As you can see, Semic starts resing and then stops and lets Barak have it because essentially, this is this is a very very small detail here. But they're prioritizing the renown gain of Barak's feats. The offensive feats are considered more powerful than defensive feats, and um and Semic's feats, being a JJ, are defensive. They're both about the same renown level, but they want to prioritize Barrett getting the revive over Setmix because then he'll 
allow him to get his fire flask and fury unlocked, which are stronger to um, stronger feats. So again, a, 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 a tiny little detail here. Again, this is not something, I don't think something the commentators pushed, picked up on, but it's super hard to spot these kind of things. I, I noticed when I was searching through these for, for clips, but see this, the, again, they see he's getting the renown, and then he lets Barak have it to, to prioritize the renown gain. And we see this a few times, actually, in the Dominion series, and there's a few, um, in one, I might see if I can get down to, it's an NA, um, I'm not sure, oh, I wonder if I... Can you see here anybody spot a revive? <laughs> um, hmm. All right, I can't spot it. But uh, essentially, that happened. Same thing happened in a in an NA game where Rippy was doing the revive and like letting it. It almost looked like he was trolling his ally. You know when you um uh yeah. Well, I could do that, Alexander. Yes, you're right. But I'm not sure if I would have said it, written it down as as revive or res or whatever. Um, he he was hot, looked like he was trolling his opponent by um, trolling his ally by holding the res almost up until it would be revived. But actually, he was doing that to allow his vanguard, his his raider teammate, to come and get the full revive, which is kind of smart as well. Um, I didn't always write down all of these clips, but um, all of them because I was doing these um, for showing um, it's for a, an after movie project uh, so it wasn't quite for the same thing but uh, it would I thought I'd use some of these things for the mini series uh, for for dojo rather oh jeez I'm I've it's been a while since I've done these that done dojo and as you can see my ability to actually talk and think is clearly been destroyed. All right, let's go to next clip. I put as good revenge, good stall, and good revenge management. So here he's got about like seventy five percent revenge. You can see that. Barak isn't committing to a to a gank. He's letting Janhu one v one, trying to not trying to get him low enough. So then, when they now now he's low enough health that they can essentially not worry about feeding revenge because any hit that kills will la hit the lands will kill, and that's what happens. So again, this is was good store for me to be here, but also very good revenge management. Take it from the top again. I think it's also a slight miscommunication from Nemesis here. So Ashcroft guard breaks to set up a gank here, but Barracks out of out of stamina and didn't get his health back. He didn't get his stamina back to start off that gank. I think that would have been a well taught they again we saw here this is a very similar situation to that what I mentioned earlier with the the Tote Mind gank. But Mina B was about half, two bars, half revenge. So this is perfect opportunity to go for that guard break, raider zone, Janhu bash, second zone. Except that Barak didn't quite have enough stamina back. I actually, it, 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 would, it would have still been possible to get him out of stamina heavy in there, probably. To be fair. Yeah, but I think what he was trying to do was start off the um, zone bash zone gank, the double zone gank that we saw. I think earlier. you can see like the difference between. Two teammates having played with together for a long time with Tote and Barak, and then Ashcroft is basically new in the team. Mm. So, however, I think something different happened there because as Shinobi was in his chain, a Gabby could have bounced, except it broke the first uh, like milliseconds of the unblockable GB vulnerability. However, I feel like what happened is like Ashcroft tried to GB uh, because the Shinobi lighted, and then he went in recovery. I think that Ashcroft tried to GB the recovery of that light. But then, obviously, Shinobi chained. Even though, even though he chained, he no, but it is, is 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 the garbage didn't bounce off him. Like it was, it yeah, was, a, it was a, okay. If that you was, look at no, this, was, this is this is the garbage we're talking about. Not the not the earlier oh, one. Not the earlier one. I'm sorry. The earlier one was it was a it was well timed garbage, and he actually landed it. It's just Barak didn't get to add any extra damage because he was low on health. He actually did get. He he caught the 
he caught the faint faint timing of that. Yeah, um, which I think was very unfortunate. Yeah, it's, it's pretty unfortunate, and that you would have thought that would have bounced off actually. So Minabi was lucky there, but then Barrett didn't add any extra damage to this because he was out of stamina. Yeah, and here then this guard break I think was to set up the zone the double zone gank, but because the Barrett didn't have enough time, he didn't they weren't able to, and so but then but then afterwards the they did they were did good revenge management rather than starting half a gank. Barak had enough faith in his teammates to let him get down to get him down to one bar. I mean, Even... realistically, here they can't do anything because Barak has a tag now. Barak cannot attack because that's going to feel yeah, damage. He didn't have a tag exactly, so he, they waited for his tags to expire and for the ones the health to get down low enough that then Barak could eventually just throw in have these his attack that lands would kill. So. Good stall, good revenge management. Again, good adaptation on the fly to not feed revenge. And overall, the amount of time spent stalling Minas mean to be stalled was actually less time than he would have done if he'd got revenge as well, I think. If he'd gotten revenge here, that would have been 10 seconds. Eight, wasn't it? Eight. Yeah, and probably a dead Ashcroft. Yeah, but yeah. If, yeah, they, they were low enough that the Ashcroft would have probably could have easily died to a revenge, you know, be... And it would have made sense. It made sense to to basically avoid him getting revenge and go for that yeah. instead. Especially However, if you look where they are on the rest of the map as well. They didn't need to get this kill instantly because they didn't. They weren't wor too worried about being pushed onto this point. The problem is that how he dies is basically he makes a wrong read because that some block wasn't guaranteed. Like Mina could have extended his uh, like his stall quantifiably if he made the right read there. Yeah. So I think that emphasizes it, how important it is to gank properly. And if you fuck, if you fuck up once with your teammate, that's like at least extra 10 seconds or like five, four tags to go. Absolutely, absolutely. And so we st did see just from losing that, just the miscommunication and going for the Garbro while Barrett didn't have enough stamina to, 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 come, to start the gank, that cost them 15 seconds, 30 seconds of having the... Oh, hey, babes. Sorry, Phil, to just come back. Um... From here, that one guard break just slightly early costs them thirty seconds of of not score, not having this point captured. It's a bit a bit long, yeah. Unfortunate. I mean, really good play for me to be here. It was I think Minibi was probably the Barrett, Barrett mentioned he was probably the MVP of the tournament, and I and I would agree there as well because he, he I mean, played very very well. He played amazing, and there were some. And for we actually didn't even catch his best moments. weren't caught on the stream. He did a few. I might even have them on here actually. Um, screen. Here we go. This is. We don't really get to see. We didn't get to see this one in the in the tournament because it's off screen. But you can see up there, Mina B is having a one v one against Ashcroft again, and he's doing it for long enough to stop Nemesis putting them into breaking. Um, and he not only does he one v one against Ashcroft, he actually kills Ashcroft up there, and anti ganks because Barak I think peels off to go and oh there we go he saw the tote mine going off to gank uh to anti gank no it was, it was Barak going off to sport to pull Ashcroft here, and Mina B manages again with like he was actually winning this one v one and manages to anti gank against Barak and then they capture his point. And very quickly get them into breaking, they actually end up winning this match, I think. Also, Setmix, I think that Barak said that Setmix has no uh, experience on JJ, which yeah, I mean, there. I mean, but um, uh, this is not, I wasn't trying to, um, to uh, disparage Nemesis at all. They they had to play with Setmix, was oh, new to the team for I think two days they... before the tournament, so um, like, and he and yeah, JJ wasn't the character he's used to, so. He played. He played. Played really well, considering that he'd basically only been playing on the playing the character for like a few a few days, um, and to, they managed to come second, even if they beat ECG as well. So, and I think they took oh, a yeah, map, map off these guys. Uh, so, good stuff. So that was yeah, that was another Mina, another Mina B moment there. But this critical one v one. I was actually watching Mina B screen because I was in in um, I was in over, Oversleepers comms, but. This was a very hype one we won that we unfortunately didn't manage to get to see on stream. There's a few moments like that. However, but... there was a mistake I saw earlier. By the way, like that uh, that's why I commented. Like I think that Setmix and or oh, they did incredibly well, 
However, you can kind of see that he doesn't have experience with the character because if you see how he died earlier, uh, he died. Okay, what happened is he went for an unblockable, which the raider dodge attacked, and then went in. Uh, Set makes avoided that with Shifu, but then he zoned. And what happened is he actually traded. Yeah, it's right here actually. Yeah, like right here, and he zones to punish him, but Raider kills him. Uh, yeah. That's one of the things against Raider you do with JJ. It's, JJ is actually quite safe against Raider when it comes to trading, as you can just go into Shifu and then let go to, to block the heavy, and you can also counter GB. Uh, if you zone against most other characters, you're going to hit them, but not Raider. You just trade. Yeah, yeah. Maybe he made the read that Raider is just going to, like, faint to neutral, like, not going to chain. That is also possible. But yeah, I think that was overall a very unsafe play. Yeah, well, I mean, it happens, but I just want oh, to yeah. point out the Mina, yeah, Mina B's hero play there. All right, let's go to the next one, which is great tag management. Again, we're, talking about, we're going to keep on talking about re re revenge tags, um, just how how good these guys are at keeping them here. So we have Tote Mind, loads of revenge. Ashcroft, also loads of, also loads of revenge. This is a 2v3 scenario. They do, they do get the gank on Ashcroft, and then on Tote... They let this 1v1 just happen, basically, because they know they can't feed revenge. Um, and look how close he is to getting This is a really, really hard for them to gank, but Ficus basically lets his tag expire by not adding on any damage. So we see, basically, from when Ficus's attack, I think... He's only his 1v1 here. That guard break is... The only attack Ficus throws against Tote Mind the entire time. All the other ones are fainted. Till he's just low enough that Ficus can let go of his attack and kill and get the guarantee the kill. So like, I think it's quite noteworthy to mention how Tote Mind was actually playing a bit more uh more aggressively, so to say, than you normally in gank. And that's yeah. because he knew that his opponent had attacked, so he couldn't touch him. Exactly. So they they he need he he know that his opponent he he's basically trying to get Ficus to touch him so that he gets revenge. Um, yeah. and by doing that like anything where you might bait out um, I mean it's, it's hard it's, I think it's harder to do actually post CC post um, removal option selects previously you could throw an unblockable and just hope they'd do a do a, an option select against you that then you could block or parry and you'd get a tag from them but you just can't do that anymore it's really hard to get a I tag mean, off somebody uh, I, I don't know if that's a fully valid point As, you know before there were some like, I feel like if you're in a gag situation, you wouldn't really use GB or bash ops and, like, you know, you're you on feed revenge. Even if you get hit most of the time, that's a guaranteed GB from your teammate who presumably does not have a tag. So, I see. Yeah, still... I mean, some, like, but, but, but then they have to, then they have to, you know, block ball, right? So, it's the, the, the option was that. They, they basically had to eat an unblockable or had to go for a regular. I don't know. I think it's just harder. It's hard to get. Tags. People, people would just do option selects without thinking sometimes. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but if you're talking about these kinds of players, this is no way that they're gonna in their right oh, mind no, even no. send one attack. No, like I, no, I've been watching no. these games for for like you definitely saw people bait out option selects and get tags. Like keep tags on that, especially back then when option selects were basically second nature to anyone. Yeah, that, it happened a lot. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's hard to get tagged off people in general, which is, I think is a flaw in the revenge system, personally, and people find it very unsatisfying. But, um, again, just sort of, again, good revenge management from Oversleepers, and they did end up going to win the overall, um, the whole thing. So, I'll play from them. Um, and the last one, we have uh, freezeadvice.mp3. Oh, we have two more from, from these. From, from... So we go. Barrack here has nowhere to heal. He knows he's going to be breaking soon. Freeze advice. Start MP3. And decides to get himself killed. Um, well, with, you know, have, kill himself with to allow himself to get the uh, respawn before he's put into breaking. Essentially, I think we talked about that as well while watching. I thought it was quite of an overreaction from Barrack there. I'm not sure whether it was that one. Wait, could you scroll a bit back uh, if you could? Yeah, yeah. Put it back from, go back I thought from... that wasn't really a reason for him to kill himself there. Especially because I saw he had Fury, and maybe if Fury was like more than halfway in, that's quite yeah, the way. I mean, 
he's not going to use it like he was in he was on this fight there and then he lost yeah. the point right so either yeah. he has to push back in he decides not to push back in on his own he's in a their situation here if mid goes towards if mid goes to oversleepers and he's on that on his on a point and gets executed that's him at, it's him dead out of the game for good so I think it was the right call to make here. And we'll see. He I, I think the mistake he made was that he, he went on the zip line and he just shouldn't have gone on the zip line. Well, I mean, because he, I think he realized no, it he needs, as he was no, in the no, air. No, 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 no. He, he, he went up there to kill himself. That was an intention. He went up to the zip line intentionally to drop off and kill himself. Because that was the spot you can kill yourself from. And here yeah. we see then he gets... Then he allow He sees that mid is not going to go towards oversleepers. He's already, his minions had pushed. He gets and he gets back up with full health to make their final push onto onto one point. We're actually gonna well watch this bit from from here on because we're gonna see um, a really good moment from Fikas as well, which actually won basically won them the match. Um, so here I think they decide to split into two two v twos rather than there's a bit of sort of back and forth where they oh yeah no I remember this bit so. Again, this is a, this is one I say is a really well timed push from from Barak here. So Barak Semix is on the point already. Barak is goes to reinforce Semix. No, Yogurt is really low, but he's got he's got Phalanx on. So Barak oh. essentially baits out. He doesn't get any use of his Phalanx whilst he's charging whilst he's chasing Barak. Barak wins this one v one. Nice gets an execution too. The rest of his teammates are keeping them busy over there. And here we have got some really good moments where he, Barak plays really really well and Fikus is incredibly lucky. To, to keep them in this game. So if he charges them out. He's basically got Juggernaut, and that's the only thing that allows him. That that Juggernaut popped there. If Barak had managed to grab him half a second earlier, so maybe if he hadn't gone for the execution, um, pop oh, Jug. I mean, literally, it was almost frame perfect. That's the, the only reason he can then do his forward dodge heavy to get onto the point and stop them capturing the point is because he has that Juggernaut up. So and Barak then actually even managed to get him off the point again. But by that point, the rest of Nemesis has lost their team on fight. The other team, you you want to blame Set Mix there as well? No, I don't for think not, it's really for set. not going further back, allowing him to lock onto him. Actually, uh -huh. having the the direction for the forward dodge. Oh, yeah. that's a good point. I hadn't really thought about that. Um, if Set Mix parried, then he could have been able to like. You could do I mean, he was out of range anyways. Like Set Mix wasn't yeah, set in mix. range to parry and wasn't like far enough back to deny the lock on. Yeah, because if Fikus didn't have set mix as a target to lock on, his forward dodge heavy would have gone wherever, but not on the point. Yeah, no, that is a good point actually. You're right, set mix, but here that was I hadn't even thought about that as a misplay. But on the back, so the forward dodge heavy whiffs. I think set mix didn't. I mean, the, the jug was popped so quickly that I think set mix might have not even realized that he'd be able to dodge oh, out of there. I, with I don't think you can expect that. Like the fact that the yeah, Andretti was popped there, and you know, it's obviously a pressure situation. I don't think you can really fault set mix. Like it yeah. wasn't the play, but that situation was just like to make that call would be extremely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it like yeah. it would require no, yeah. really, really good. I mean, be fair with all the stress they're in right oh, now. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and he and he, and he also oh. needed to be close enough to capture that point and then be able to then reinforce Barrack as soon as that because the figure is not is is not over. He's got his tier four available still. He needed to be close enough once he would caught the point to then join in and help. Barak deal with him. Barak had a solid amount of HP. He could stall for at least like 15 seconds. Or yeah, whatever. yeah, but he... No, well, I, I think I don't think Semex can be really be blamed here. But it was really, really no, good play I from know. from Fickers. No, I was just showing like a potential way of yeah. pulling it off. It's not like... Well, yeah. Reading so far ahead, oh, this is going to happen now. He's going to try that. It's just... I know, it's absolutely crazy. I mean, like... Yeah. But there's so much steps that goes on to this. While the jury did help him get back on the point, it isn't entirely a good thing because i mean getting on the point is a good thing but the only reason he got called by park in the first place is because that he got caught in the start of a juggernaut if he hadn't like raiders check cash charge is one of the easiest things in the get version reaction externally so if you go back like you see that the only reason he couldn't dodge is because he was in the animation of popping juggernaut so yeah it's true so i mean something's got to confirmed it with with something maybe he, he would have killed he could have lie attacked and confirmed it for example that would have been that would have done he I think he just him. saw the, the raider coming and expected the raider to pitch an attack instead of grabbing him out of the way. Normally, but I mean, it was a good, it was a, clearly a good jug pop anyway because that was that was a yeah. situation where you'd want to be using juggernaut. You're at 
like half health, you're on the opponent's point. You got to, you know, you have to hold this point. Stop them okay. from rallying. Also, something else is that a Raider's crashing charge has, uh, well, it, I, no, it was Stompy charges. Yeah. It has horrendously bad tracking, like genuinely horrendously bad. Sometimes you can be having a person standing still and it would miss. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that is also something that could have happened. Yeah, but I just thought yeah. it was just a crazy... The jog, the jog pop could have evaded the, the thing. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Jog pop could have luck. evaded it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was... It was a clutch moment for certain, and I just again wanted to point out how how smart it was to get back on the point and and very close to the thing. And that's it for sort of the the teachable moments from. Uh, um, oh no, this, this one's a good one actually. Yeah, we've got um. Again, this is a. This is why you you'll see, Fire Deluge comes out, and then immediately Semix pops his phalanx to keep his teammates alive. Um, I think that actually ends up winning this fight. So again, we we'll see this, you'll see this quite a lot in when you're when teams are discussing this and they're talking about their who's 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 got has is phalanx still available? Um, they'll talk about using these feats to to bait out like phalanx. In fact, that was in a way having using that tier four here meant that phalanx wasn't available later on. So. Again, this is just another sort of good example of, of feats being counterplay. And I see a lot of players talking about how oh feats are really boring. They make the fight, they make the game less interesting. And I think they just don't really understand the tactical depth that is available when you're looking at when you're using these feats. Again, because they see that Setmix is going to want to pop it, um, Yoshi really focuses him and and hits hits him twice. And does even more damage. Um, doesn't end up stopping him from popping phalanx, but he's pop. He's only used his tier four, and he knows that Semix is going to pop phalanx, so he goes after Semix, which is again pretty smart. All right, on to the NA side. We have some more clips for the NA. Right, I'm not sure how many of these I highlighted for um, for these. More of these are hype moments rather than teachable moments. Which, how long we've been going for? I don't want to be just a uh, Blabbering on the entire time, so. Noodles, hello. All right. That's what we've got. Great composure to store Venge from Clux and Scorpion. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, no, it's not. Okay, so here we go. Um, we see that Scorp, they are in a situation where they've not managed to... Well, they actually did gank pretty well, actually. Um... We'll see this gank. We'll go from this gank from the beginning. Scorpion against w Scorp and Clux against Willem here. He's got half revenge already. Get the parry. Light, conf light confirm the unblockable. That has fed revenge, but Willem is holding it now. Parries. Thanks to, again, this is the. Clux here was going to try to bait, bait out the range pop with the fainted heavy. See Scorpion gets the parry anyway. Goes for a choke to stall out revenge. Another parry into the headbutt again for maximum amount of revenge, st revenge stalling out here, and you can see it ends up with Willem, like, gets nothing from his revenge here, absolutely nothing done with it. So, just good composure. Even if you do feed revenge, I think there'd be also be a general tip to note if you if you got revenge and you've got a heavy coming your way. Uh, very likely that's going to be fainted, especially if it's not unblockable. Not really much point popping revenge. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's a risk. You, you can't, you can't it's, it's not. It's a risk, you know? but at the same time, it's... Um, I think he made the misplay by actually doing a zone there. If he hadn't done a zone, he would have been fine. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, he, he did get go for zone, but when he's surrounded, he, he doesn't expect people yeah. to, to go oh. for parries on necessarily. I mean, you can't expect, oh, someone's, oh, he has revenge. First thing's going to do, press the zone button, right? Yeah. Maybe, but he's probably panicking. He had like one, that one ten health left, and I don't think he's expecting Clucky's to go for the, to go for the parry on the raw heavies either. Um, I mean, if anything, when you've got revenge, it's a safe time to throw attacks because then you can't have your revenge. Um, but but especially against the JJ when you throw. Yeah, uh, no, so against the JJ, it's not, not a good, not a good move. But it was a. Uh, Good stall from these players here to basically use all of the revenge up. So, 
And Plucky even, Plucky even delays his headbutt then to get the maximum amount of time of getting that of that revenge wasted essentially. So good moment there. If you even if you do feed revenge, you can all with the right combination of moves you can prevent the person from actually using it. Well more than reads as And reads because... indeed, yeah. Um alright, here we've got just want to point out this is not necessarily a tactical moment, but it's hilarious. So, um, <laughs> a classic GB whiff moment. Rippy's an absolute machine. Um, <laughs> it was all part of his mind game. It's all part of the mind games. The classic GB whiff, the way the classic GB whiff. The, the, I've, I've heard. Tell recently that if you want, and it's a JJ specific tip, that if you do the JJ parry choke and then GB afterwards, it is the perfect distance for the opponent's counter GB to whiff and let get you and get you a GB as well. So, uh, tip for you JJ players if you want to do what Rippy did there and <clears throat> embarrass Vane, <laughs> go for the choke into a GB. And then you're apparently almost guaranteed to have this happen. I think I think Rippy was holding backwards then as well. He was trying to whiff it. I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna say that was intentional because he was at the range where his GB would definitely whiff. Like I'm I'm gonna be a Spaniard whiffing a GB in a team fight is so fucking bad you can't even imagine it. No, he don't. No, you can see he's he his ally had already killed the the yeah, Willem. Willem was dead, so Rippy was pretty safe. He had health lead as well. Like as funny Willem as is did. dead. Now he's like, all right, there we go. I think that was pretty. That was pretty smart. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna believe. I'm choose to believe that it was intentional. Um, um, we'll get Rippy in to tell us later. Uh, I, I let's ping him. Let's ping him. Um, see if he's into Twitch chat. Is he? All right. Mm. Uh, was it? Was it intentional, Rippy? He's mm. outplayed, yeah, I know, it's absolutely intentional. <laughs> uh, Bye, Rippy, well, how's it going? No, might as well keep it like that. Yeah, yeah, definitely intentional. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, see, I'll see, I'll be honest, I don't remember. Not something I usually do, so probably not intentional, but it was also always backwalking, so I might have gotten a genius idea, I don't know. Fair enough, fair enough. All right, who knows, I, man? Who knows? Who knows? All right. I think this is where I, I ran out of time to um, highlight these things. So I'm going to just like look through and see which one of these, try and remember which one of these we have teachable moments. Um, oh, this one's just funny. So I'm going to bring this one up. Uh, this one is a pretty good one, actually. Um, all right. First one we have just uh, some. I just like I just like that was that amuses me. Just the, the the just over just gonna top light over and over again. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, there's not a huge amount of uh, in the BTU matches that we can uh, point out as uh, very teachable moments. But this is a good interrupt here, and he tries to go for a molly, where he's where where he throws a heavy. He's basically poking with lights, trying to bait this. Bait the heavy, bait a light parry attempt, and then throw the heavy. But but Mamba here is having enough, none of it. it. Doesn't stop him from getting poked to death anyway. But um, there we go. What's this next one? This was um, patience from from on flash to get two executions in breaking. So you can see at the point hit where they are here, nine hundred points, one hundred seventy eight points. They know that they're going to be getting mid looks like it's going their ways these are they are going to be breaking these guys any moment btu is one dead the rest are low and you can see that on flask here is are basically playing with their food waiting not going for not going for kills until they are at the point where they can get ex they're getting dead into it, into breaking so that was well i would not just nice patience there from on flask to this, they had this team fight one earlier, and then instead of like 
finishing off the kills instead of really going going all in they waited t until they had gotten to breaking before going for the the fatal blows breaking and dead there you go in fact they i think they get the points from the kill which what what which what puts them which is what puts them into breaking even so again, there's a few examples of of smart play in team fights to around the breaking mechanic which is um that happens a few times in, in the Hunter Mini series, so we'll see if we can find some more clips of that. Um, we have some comedy flipping, that's not... <laughs> um, that's not a teachable moment, really. I can't remember which one. If you see anything that you like, oh, that's why I want to hear about that, just, just, just yell. Um, go with this one. Here's another one, another example of the same thing, which is <clears throat> waiting to get the kill in breaking. Here we see that Rippy actually lands a sickle rain and decides to not go for the final hits of it in order to get Willem, not kill Willem before they start breaking. He yeah. could have actually gone I for it anyway. I could have went for it, but I didn't know we would get mid, so that's why I waited. Yeah. I mean, you, exactly. I got the XP anyway, so you got the execution, out. so it worked out very well for you. But it was it just a, just smart play there to, again, keep um, keeping sort of the the overall waiting for the blood to show up on the screen before they go for the executions. <laughs> and the, actually, the commentators did mention this one as well, so it's good good spot for the commentators to see. Uh, this is not, by the way, if any, before anybody uh, accuses me of a uh, of a. Uh, uh, poke of uh, slagging off the commentators for not managing to spot all these details. Like as we've as we've seen going through these, the Freeze and and my other co co colleagues here have spotted even more details as we're going through. This is these are these are things that are not easy to see in the moment when everything's going on. So the fact that they I, I um like spotted them later later than the fact they picked, picked up on a, on a good number of them actually is uh, pretty impressive as well. So. This is the kind of thing that you only really see if you're, you know what to look for, and you're going over the the footage with a fine tooth comb to spot these things. So, props to them for actually call, they actually did call this one out as well. Very nicely done. Um, what have we got here? This is, oh yeah, so this is um in this in the earlier fight. I think they know that they they've won this um, on flask of one that. One sort of one v one in mid. Lucky's is leaving again. Not this is. I guess this is a good moment here to see that this is a team fight. This is a push onto their home point that goes badly. Wheat dies. Lucky's doesn't want to feed revenge. He sorry feed renown on their home point. And he just leaves. So good play, Lucky's there to get get the hell out of dodge. And but Vane knows that he's going going to be going back. Knows he's. There's only so many places he can go. Vayne is already going off to intercept, which is another nice play here. And we'll see that Vayne catches him whoop, and takes him down. So nice play from Vayne there to get that kill. Um, especially when you're playing an assassin, it is important to um, make sure you get as much renown as possible by getting these kills. Um, as with Warlord back in competitive, well, Clucky's is a Warlord one trick, really. And, um, well, actually, Rippy, you're here in chat with us, aren't you? You still here with us? Uh, yeah, I am. Yeah, so tell us a little about, about um, Clucky's decision to to pick Warlord and what, um, uh, well, what your team discussion was about. We, it. We, we got Clucks like maybe, I think, two, three weeks before the finals, right? Um, and Clux pretty much can only play Warlord and JJ at the moment, but Scorpio is already like the the best or one of the best JJ in NA, so decide to keep Scorp on JJ and just have Clucky play on his comfort pick, and it worked out well for us. Yeah, it did. There's some really there was some play where he did say that there was stuff he just couldn't do, you know, like he just lost because of his jar, but generally speaking, he did good enough to um, he did good enough. Yeah, most, yeah. Of the, most of the team fight, and he got a lot of ledges as well. It's actually crazy. Oh, yeah. if, you, on, um, if you watch his stream, he gets so many ledges. Yeah, I have some. I definitely have some clips from of Flux getting 
like double ledges. Um, so you can't pick any character but Warlord. Yeah, <laughs> but you did get he did get some really. This was a really nice moment here. One ledge, another one in the hole. Boop. Oh, he gets jug he pops Juggernaut in order to get this guard break and gets another one. And somehow Vayne doesn't get a ledge then. Those sad times. But there are a few moments where where Clucky's got like very critical ledges. Do you remember the game on Overwatch where we yeah, literally think, won because of the ledge? I think I have that here as well. Critical ledge. I don't know if you have it, but basically to explain a bit, a bit what happened, um, I, we were breaking right and me and Weed, I think we're both low. I don't remember, but basically, um, I think Will or Tom, someone gets in and contests the point, and Clocks get the ledge on Overwatch. She and basically, if he doesn't get that crashing charge there, we lose the game. Yeah, so that was just a different a different ledge that he got earlier on, which is actually a really good one on this on yeah. this point. Um, I think it was on this game though. It, it was this game. It was this game. game. It's just gonna be right at the end, I think. Um, here we go. This is it. This is actually a, and just a, a just a, a great moment in general. Um, Mo here just gets absolutely played by his own teammate, which is pretty hilarious. I just want to point out that the and then oh, I think Plucky's a shot in a second. Saves the day. Yeah. Basically, Mogul Ledge, where we kind of feed Venge for no reason. I almost die. We end up getting the kill later on. Then Willin is coming in there, and then Clucky yeah. gets the ledge there, so would have been able to. Uh, yeah. That st that allowed yeah. you to get the point, which was completely yeah. critical in getting this. I'll see though if Willin um, doesn't like push us and just wait on the outside, you know, on the. On the side of the zone. Yeah. Um, they get there in time and they win the game. That was a bit of a throw. Yeah, in fact, I actually, I do remember, um, I was in, I was in, um, Black Jackal's comms. Um, I think Nutella was just doing, doing your verification. I do remember, mm -hmm. um, them calling out, be careful, don't get ledged. And then Will did get ledged. And, and yeah, yeah it was, it happens, sad. you know, can't, you know, I know. Can't think about everything all the yeah. time. But... Also, I just want to point out here how Mo gets completely played by, I think Egg getting the kill on uh, one of you, uh, not on Clucky's one, who was, or well, Scorpion, I guess, um, which is what put them into breaking. Because <laughs> previously you'd be, like, at this point, you'd be okay. Like, there's no point generation going on. You're not going to be. Oh, he died on them... purpose. Just, yeah, just say that. Yeah, yeah. Just, just say that Scorpion died on purpose. If uh, you have the JD Shino gank we did on, um, on Overwatch on Mamba, I mean, might do. I'll, I'll double check. Yeah, just a, just a, I mean, it's a great moment, really. Uh, I feel really bad for Mo. <laughs> I was, Mo was like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Uh, again, this would have been great for everybody to hear the team comms as well, but it was a really bad moment for Mo. But, yeah, kind of great moment for the tournament to have such dr drama. Oh, it definitely adds some hype when you have a yeah. legend like that. And yeah, shit. absolutely. So I, even though everybody, like, everybody, everybody finger quotes hates those legends, noodles, get off my... Keyboard, come on, out of All right, let's see if I can get. So you're asking if you have the, the JJ's, you know, yeah, this is another again the. Well, we can look at this really. Let's play here, just nice longbow peel there as well. Yeah, that spooked me. Again, really good play here to to out the points, and it was really unfortunate for. I think they also get a really bad breaking as well. Like, is it the fight where it's um, this one here? They go from breaking to being all three to being three dead in seconds, and it's just just like yeah, there we're sending every attack on that fight yeah. and score. Everyone's sending all of their attacks, and they just die. Yeah, like they go from. I think it's that you think you guys break first, even. Um, yeah, I know they do break first. Okay. I got like, confused, but it's just a really unfortunate like turn of events. Just everything goes wrong all at once, yeah. and they go from being a really really. Well, I like as well that we were able to keep mid. Um, if they take mid, they already win the game as well. So yeah, I guess well played from Scorpion Weed. And then here they're trying to trying to gank a Goki with Juggernaut, 
Um, not much really you can do about that. Yeah, like, at this point, honestly, I was kind of actually hit. This is this is a, a hilarious body block gank, actually. Uh, and moved all the way too. I, I was like, just spam him, just spam him. I got, I'll, I'll body block him, and I just move all the way. By accident. I just yeeted my cat off my keyboard. Um. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, ask you have the JJ Shinobi gank we did on Overwatch on Mamba. I will check that. I do. Do. On anti gank or oh, Mamba, so that'll be in which map was that you guys played then? I think I have the time code on the VOD if you want. Oh, do Twitch you? Or I just um, oh, I'm not sure the Twitch VOD overlaps. Um, you were playing, it was here. Oh, oh, no, it wasn't. Here you go. I sent it in the DMs. All right, okay, so oh, I think that's some. Oh yeah, I can just open it here. Okay, to go to this one. It's gonna show up. There we go. Oh wow, it's a pretty really? good game. I'm happy we were able to land it because we didn't practice it like that much. So could have failed really quickly, honestly. I think I did have this one clip somewhere actually. I just uh, yeah, this is this is a really nice, a really nice gank here. We'll see it back from the beginning. Yeah, your Shinobi was actually terrifying, Rippy. So. Let's go. There was a. This was actually. Oh no! I remember this one was a bit of a weird one, but where yeah, I missed like again. There. Yeah, I missed the the sickle rain input and got and and actually Vay managed to get away. He does actually give still give you the kill because um he he didn't wait for his assist tags to go off. Um, so he didn't really and and this point was there. So I don't really know why Vayne decided to kill himself. He there. didn't want us to keep him alive and off his respawn. He knew he was mm. going to die anyway, so I assume oh, okay. he just jumped to um. Yeah. I assume that's why he tried right. Just jump so um, he wouldn't stay alive for no reason. Maybe. You think that he could, like, even at, even at one health here, like, he could have helped Mamba, he would have stopped this gank happening. And Mamba just gets completely, sort of, yeah, completely that was maybe... blown up. So I think if he'd been there, he would have been able to stop that happening. Um, which would be I mean, better, better than nothing, like, so, yeah. In Thinking... all fairness, I don't think you would expect your teammate to get like absolutely ganged. So, well, well, well that's I mean, Shinobi. if you can, even if you can, Shinobi, right? Even you, if you it's did... not this gang, yeah, I think I think he would have best. Uh... Yeah, I mean, he could, but like, I don't think he was. It was their point. Onflask owned the point, so I don't think it was a good move for him to 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 commit freeze dot MP3 um, at that point. But that's how it goes. Um, see if we can find some other. Uh, ah, I don't think one. we have contributed much to fight anyway, so not, uh, not the worst move to jump, honestly. Right, so here we have a you putting off a really long execution on Mo. This was in your grand finals uh, reset, I think, and Scorp farming mid. So here, I like. I think we see you get the kill. If he gets the kill. And Scorp, I'm not sure we actually see it on, on screen. Okay, here we go. So, so we just just there, we saw Scorpion, Rippy get the kill. Scorpion leaves the point, who you were, who is ganking with you. Scorp runs over to mid to make sure you're farming enough minions so that by the end of his execution, you've got into breaking and he doesn't get, uh, Mo doesn't get the revive. Yeah. So, that was like, really short. We that was get really, it. really. I mean, you, you can see just just the amount of time you had left. Or maybe, or maybe a second or two away from not getting it. So yeah, but this is the kind of thing that you need to be aware of to like that you're playing around in order to make to take advantage of this. It's like minute, like you're. There's only a few points that that would sway it and. Being aware enough to go, okay, I need to go to mid and kill about 10 minions in order to get this to allow us to get into breaking with one player, yeah, exactly. Perm perma dead is that's that's pretty pretty top tier stuff, which is why you guys are the NA champions. Um, all right, we'll see if I've got any more clips in here. Just uh, oh, this is a this is another moment, this is a, a quite a funny moment actually, but. If there's there is there is a teachable moment here, which is to say, never turn your back on a warlord that you think is dead, even if he's not dead. 
No, even if he is, if, don't don't turn your back on a, a warlord you think you've killed. I remember that player. The willing kills himself. Plucky is bleeding out. Moe's like, oh yeah, we'll just ignore ignore him. He's dead. Rip Mo. Put it that way. Ends up not being. I think uh, she actually that probably does end up being like critical in. Uh, they, didn't they, they, they did, um, they did end up winning this match. They did, I think, but you know, yeah, we... still pretty pretty good. And Scorp is an absolute machine here as well. So yeah, there's another one down as well. Um, Scorp dies right. Uh, we kill someone. We're, we're three on our point. We is contesting their point. Um, I see Scorp is full HP and Clocks is one HP, and I just run straight to see and I just trust them with the gank. Clocks dies. Um. So Scorp is in the 1G1 with Hag, he clutches at 1G1, and then we gang the guy on C and cap the entire map. But then I threw the next fight, so we lose the game. Oh, that happens. Then you got deflected into a, into a top heavy. <laughs> and you quite, he had quite a big point to advantage as well. So, um, yeah, the BGA won the, won the first Grands match, didn't they? So that's, you had to come back and racket reset. All right, let's just quick check in case there's anything else. We have some mirrors and some other clips, but I've been talking for a long time, and that gives us half an hour for... Yeah, all right. Oh, okay, we've got a rare mistake from TKS here, and Feed Revenge. Oh, okay, not bad. On. There we go, that was a slight mistimed GB, and then... <sighs> this That's is good, another... I threw the light after it, that was my mistake completely. All right, let's see this gank here. Again, again you... this is one of these scenarios where... This is what many players would consider a very winnable one one v two for for Mo here, um, but just so that shows how how lethal Shinobi ganks are. That was a I think mistake. You didn't manage to get the full gank off, but then here when you got I the second one, tried to one, go for it um on block wall, but could have just won for two heavies in that scenario. Tried to there. go for the gank we showed off earlier, and then I threw the second light, so it changes timing, and then I missed my deflect and gave Venge for free. That was pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, can be a tournament without a couple tries. Yeah. Ex well, exactly, and and you and just, just point out how the, how well fought these uh, finals were. It was they, they were they were close. NA was a, was exciting to watch, especially you guys against Black Jackals were, were some really really awesome matches. All right, so I think I'm going to. You don't hear some mistakes. They simply challenge themselves. Yeah, you got to give your opponents a chance, right? <laughs> exactly. All right. It would be too easy otherwise. Exactly. You know? So I'm going to hand over the the mic, the lead of the mic to Freeze, and he's going to talk about some of the. I'll just change the scene so we have the um, the more serious stuff. Yeah, the more serious stuff. All right. Yeah. So by, by the way, I uh, if possible, I want him put people if anybody wants to speak up especially people involved might be the wrong word but affected by the whole thing yeah so players anybody from eu any eu comp players who want to talk about the no, disqualifications these, yeah. disqualifications and stuff now is the moment to jump into come into dojo jump into the voice chat i'm going to be shutting up because a bit too close situation to really be able to because uh, as i said i was helping admin it so too close to be able to talk much myself, but I yeah, will let Freeze have the yeah. I'll, I'll go I mean, with Pinion. Can, and I can hop in as well. Yeah, yeah, anybody wants to. just come in. And you want to talk about the mini series in general and give you feedback, now's yeah. the time. Right. You have the floor, Freeze. Go. All right. Cheers, cheers, cheers. So right. let's start with the dojo doesn't condone cheating. Let's put it like that, first of all. So no matter what we say, uh, we like some of these players. I don't know. We like all of them players. But even if we like them, like breaking the rules. Rules are here for a reason, right? Might be the boom made me speaking, but <laughs> but yeah. So let me sum up first the three things: the age thing, underage players playing, then the account sharing, and basically account sharing ultimately leads to match fixing, right? Those are the three reasons, and we have the special disqualification that happened live from Russian mind games, which. Just didn't believe that they would get caught. So I guess that happened. And yeah, let's talk age first, because I think that's the most controversial one, because players just don't want to believe. Why is it the age thing? 
why can't I not participate? I'm so good at the game. Why can't I participate? It makes no sense to them. And I think to this day, we, I don't know, does Ubisoft know themselves? I don't know. They haven't talked to us. Because that's the next thing I want to say. Uh, do you guys think that if it was communicated properly, why we have the age limit of 18, that it might have not happened to this degree? Because we see a lot of other esports where that the 16 year old move the game in house uh, kind of stuff and they're allowed to play on stage. Because a lot of people also say it's the, the age rating of the game, but we have never gotten any confirmation. Yeah, I'm not sure what the reason is, but if it wasn't enforced from the start, there wouldn't be that situation happening right now, is what I'll yeah, say. Yeah, but that's not what I mean. The enforcing is, is a big thing, but is it, mm-hmm. what if, would half people, would they have even tried if they were given like a proper reason that they could definitely. understand, if I guess? If they give a reason and it's still not enforced, people would definitely have done the same thing. I don't think it would have made a difference at all. Any difference? Okay, okay, fair enough. Because I, I thought about that while, while thinking about mm-hmm. how I introduced the age thing. And I, I don't know, maybe it's because people, they are young. So entitlement there a little bit. So I don't know whether it would have yeah, made I a mean, difference. So. It's always restrained to have like, probably your favorite game and being really good at it and you're not just not allowed to play um, in the official competition. It's restrained for sure. Okay, so I'm giving too much credit. Everyone says it wouldn't have made a difference. Okay, would have cared. Okay, fair enough. So it's... I still would have wanted the reason to be honest with Ubisoft because I'm really curious why we are uh, 18 limit because there are so many esports where it's not a thing. Even like CS plays 16 and all that. Yeah. I was just really curious about that. But yeah, I think that that's the, the big the big thing here. Had they enforced the rule? And it wouldn't have become such a such a big deal. And exactly. them ignoring it for so long just exacerbated the problem and in the end it's what Exactly. I'll kinda of repeat like, what's already been said, but even though yeah. we all agree that that rule doesn't make a lot of sense, you know, and that it kinda some very very good player doesn't get to play because of it. Um, yeah. It still yeah. wouldn't have been like a shit show like that if it wasn't forced from the start. Was to it let it happen to their yeah. tournament. Yeah. Put it in numbers. It was 12 from 16 people DQ'd in exactly. here. Basically, the 16 people are qualified and 12 were disqualified because of it. Because of everything started with that one H rule. But yeah. Of the conference. Every team is cheating, so why can't we? But yeah, it's, once again, it's like the just because somebody breaks a rule it doesn't mean you are allowed to break it as well. It's the thing everyone wants the money, everyone sees the money, I guess, and wants every little advantage. And also, something that uh, you know, people I feel like are trying to stand at some high ground, but because I've been in a variety of competitive environments, like not at all related to like games or for other or whatever. And if people are given the opportunity, if there's a competition to win, they will try to cheat. Like it's just, it's human nature. I've seen that by very talented people. You will try to cheat because you want to win. If you really want to win, you will try that. Even, you know, if in a lesser degree. And that's why, you know, prestigious uh, competitions of any sort have very, very strict rules. Because without that, you can't trust the people because as, you know, as good as someone is, they're just, the necessity to win is just going to like overcome your morals, so to say. That's uh, every, everywhere. Yeah, you see it in normal sports as well. I mean, you see that at the highest level, like, yeah. all the doping scandals. I mean, the, so, the, the, yeah. <laughs> like I've been in all the like, math competitions and even some people who are like li- the top of the top, like some of amazing mathematicians, like they will still try to cheat their way in, uh, you know, get some few of the problems beforehand. It's just doesn't matter even if you're that good. It's just always better to be safe and always better to try to get a little extra. Yeah. Okay, then the account sharing, I guess. Oh, that's a, a candle from Anton and Razor. But yeah, you too. Uh, I mean, if you guys want to speak up, now's, now's the time. But I understand if neither of you want. But the account sharing... Um... I put this. Let's move on to something else, actually. Um, 
the perception of the com community took a big hit once again. Like we dug ourselves out of the if I can even say ourselves uh, out of the the hero series, uh, and then goes right back to what happened in the dumb series now. On one hand, I, I guess we can be happy that the that the game journalists didn't pick this one up. On the other hand, are we not big enough to pick that up? Or maybe it's just not out there. <laughs> Either or. The account sharing of 87. Yeah, but on the other hand, it's like, what I don't want to see is people bashing all the comp players now. I think everyone should apologize from the people involved, like openly, at least. I think it's a it's a weird thing because nobody except for the couple of streamers like Clutch that play in the, the in comp can really say they have a fan base or even care about having a fan base. So who would you even apologize to? So I get that. But on the other hand, you have like people not involved in the comp scene, never watching the comp scene, now making videos about them and bashing them. I don't like. Yeah, that's really that cool. It's, it's just kind of, it's kind of like kick the person already down. Like, what's the fucking? I'm, there? I'm not gonna try and defend them because I, well, as we said, I don't support any cheating and stuff. But exactly. um, people that actually don't care about competitive just wait for an opportunity to give themselves a reason of why they hate it, and then they see, oh, people cheated. That's why I like, I hate competitive. But oh yeah, no, I'm, know, I'm, I'm jump back in for that as well. Like that, that pissed me off like no end. I really, really fucking hate that shit. Like, <clears throat> something you've never cared about before, only only to, like, vilify and say, oh, it's the comp player, comp's fault for anything that anything we don't like, and then to be like, oh, now they, the, now they cheated, look, it's such that they're making us all look bad, uh, blah, 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 blah. Like, you don't even... A, a bunch of people, like, they get the, the fucking team names wrong and saying who's even been banned. It's like, you don't ca you don't give a shit. You don't care about it at all. You're only using it to further your agenda, and that really gets my go going. So I don't think it's even the agenda; it's making themselves look good. Like, well, that's still I have an the agenda, moral high ground right now because they kind of do. They they cheated. It's it's easy to judge them in that moment because whatever shit you did or I did, not, nobody knows, right? So I can stand there pretend like I never did anything wrong. So let me cast the first stone, right? Yeah, of course. So, but then like. They never put themselves in a situation where they would be like, where they would do anything wrong. It's like, I don't know. I feel like a lot of a lot of yeah. people who who are saying, "Oh, I'd never cheat," or uh, what is again, it called nowadays? Uh, oh, there's a word for that. Mm. Is that is that virtue signaling? Is that uh, virtue signaling? That, yeah, yeah. Is that it? Basically, and uh, it's it's just appalling when people do that. I think it's yeah, I agree. So. Uh, yeah, if, that was a just a if you if you are like using this opportunity to to like bag on the comp, comp scene and say oh the game is never going to be competitive or this that, and the other like you know just fuck off really like uh, maybe maybe learn a little bit about what the situation is before giving your two cents and telling saying yeah. everybody that they're they're bad yeah. and all that shit like that. Sorry, I'll the thing about is about again. <laughs> Yeah, it's not bad having an, opin an opinion, forming your opinion about it. But if it's something that doesn't concern you, or you never bothered to to get to know anything about it, so and all of a sudden you make it a big deal, and just because to, to make yourself like I don't know, not a better person, or make others perceive you as a better person, it's just I, I don't know, not just as appalling, but it is it is fucking horrendous, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's very opportunistic and yeah. just gross. Like you don't care, you don't mention like the. It's not like any of these content creators ever did anything promoting or talking about the Dominion series up until now. You know, don't don't mention it ever. Like, oh, who's my viewers? Look, don't forget to tune into the Dominion series. It's gonna be exciting. Ever have any of the teams on beforehand to interview them? No, no. I'm just gonna bag on them when we find some of them are cheating. Like. I think Razor's got a point. Like, it doesn't make any difference. It won't change the thing. People will still hate competitive and competitive players. Yeah, but yeah. it just gets well, them no, a I mean, yeah. they're, they're, they're just, <laughs> they just gave them another reason to hate them. Yeah. It's just, I think it's important to just clean the slate, I guess. Like, come out, apologize. Even if they don't care. Even if it's even if you're apologizing to people that usually don't give a shit. But they can no longer tell you 
oh, you didn't even apologize back then. And then you probably continued to do that. Probably conspired in the, in the background again and did it. And, you know, it's, it's, it's that kind of stuff. I don't know, clean the slate. Tried to be better, I guess. I mean, I, yeah. I, yeah. It's, yeah, it's easy for me to say as well. Then. It's, you know, it's yeah, just, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. Take the opportunity, I guess. I mean, it's the other side are many cons are there as well. So what? I understand why somebody feels like, why should I apologize to them? Like they didn't care before and now all of a sudden they have to apologize. So I, I get it. Yeah. I, I mean, I just... think most of the players who have a platform have apologized. Like, I don't know. I, don't... I mean, I've seen, uh, obviously Clutchmeister did, uh, Legions did his video explaining it. Um, like, I don't know if there's, I don't really know much about the Russian Yeah, I was community. just about to ask, do we know how it's perceived over there? Like, from, from their teams? I, I, I wouldn't be I guess nobody you. knows. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, if, anybody, if anybody who does know about uh, the Russian community, and I know if there's, like, big Russian... I don't know if there are any big Russian Frona YouTubers similar to... <laughs> Might be. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's one. I'm in that one Discord, but I can't read anything, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they have no idea what they're saying. Okay. Yeah, no, I don't. But yeah, leaving it go unpunished. Yeah, I think. Uh, I probably can't say that if you know that. But is there going to be another statement from Ubisoft about the whole thing? I guess when once they tell us what uh, the next Dominion series is going to be about, whether there will be one, how it's going to be, and the kind of say they're probably going to address it once more. I wouldn't be able to say, but I, I imagine they will be having more statements. I, I, can, yeah. I think it's likely, but I obviously can't say for certain. And um, again, I, don't, I want to be very careful. With, I want to be very careful with the things that I'm allowed to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 I mean, but we also don't... Officially... Oh, yeah, do we know if they're DQ'd or banned officially? So I can I no. can clarify all of the. Oh, actually, oh yes, I, sorry. We um. Uh, so we know that the teams that have been. You should be quiet, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I was only yeah, going yeah, to clarify that. I was only going to clarify that. I was only going to clarify that the teams that the players who were DQ'd before the Dominion Series finals, those guys. So um, uh, Tunnel and Friends team and the four players from. Nova 100, they have only been disqualified from the Dominion series, so they are allowed to play subsequently. I don't know what the uh, if there's any other change, any changes for the for RMG, and I can't tell. Gotcha, so I I'll mute myself again. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone will forget. Yeah, I guess that's the other thing. Uh, if you have a platform like Clutch does, they will not forget that Clutch did it. And another person would just change his name and change the team name seven times until the next broadcast, and everybody will not know what happened there. So I get it. That's, that's the two sides of a coin, I guess. Yeah, and absolutely. But yeah, but if nobody really wants to engage, I don't really know what I should say because I don't want to uh, hold my monologue here. I, I already kind of done that before, <laughs> and I'm not the most. Well spoken, anyways. So, oh, I think you're very well spoken, for instance. Yeah, not really, not really, no. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's 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 a weird thing. On one hand, it's sad that it happened like this, but on the other hand, like you can't understand why they did it. But like, who do you blame? Is the, is the big question here? I mean, who should have sides. been enforced from the beginning? There's no question about that. Yeah, you just blame both sides, honestly. Yeah. It's Ubisoft's fault for not enforcing rules, but it's also the players' fault for thinking they would never enforce it, you know? And just morally speaking, like, I don't know, I, I just wouldn't cheat, you know? Like, that's what, like, I am, so... I don't know. It's a bit of both sides to blame. Yeah. Yeah. On the uh, side of... I do agree that people, like, that Clutch is definitely going to get the worst of it. Um, and especially from people who don't, again, don't care about competitive at all they just care about unseating the number one you know they want to see clutch come pull down which i find a bit distasteful to be honest but like yeah he's apologized for what he did and he's taking responsibility for it like yeah, i mean everyone's allowed a second chance for sure um just clutch has been 
hated a lot by um, people that don't really know him or don't follow his streams anymore. And he has a lot of haters in the casual community, so it doesn't help. Yeah, the persona and his like his uh, reputation certainly don't help with. That. Yeah, exactly. That's what I meant. All right. If we got any, if we have anybody else who wants to come in and give their two cents on it, especially, I'd be interested to hear from somebody who isn't a you know, competitive player or isn't particularly associated with the, and it's only a viewer. See if how that affect, how did that affect um, your viewing of the of the Dominion series? Will you will you be keen to, to watch them in the future? Um, I personally hope you will be, but I would like Do to you want to see them. Yeah. What is I, it? Do you, maybe people think it's uh, just disqualification is not enough. I've, I've seen it on Reddit. Like, oh, they should be banned for 17 years because it's like crime against the game and, you know, all that kind of nonsense. But, yeah. Yeah, I mean, invariably that's it, been really... from people who don't watch the Minion series. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Like, I mean, they're, 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 they're watch they because of the drops, then leave. And yeah, yeah. Don't remember a single name. So... Just them acting out justice, I guess. Yeah, it's like they, they it's not like they want, they care about the quality of the games that are being played, so they right. wouldn't care about banning everybody and that so on. In terms of that, yeah, I think that some of the rules do specify that some of the players who commit some of the things, like by the rules, should be banned. However, I think that if the rules are properly enforced from the very beginning and the players somehow found a way to sneak their way in, then maybe, yeah, they could be banned. But due to the inactivity of Ubisoft and, you know, the whole like, battlefire or whatever to reinforce these rules, like, you can't justify banning someone when you yourself did absolutely nothing to actually make these rules apply. So I feel that DQs is a pretty like, good compromise, so to say. Yeah, good point. Good point. I can't. So I guess that the players got off light because of Ubisoft's or Battlefy's whoever was in charge of that in action. Right. Well, um, again, I can't say anything yeah, no more than that. <laughs> uh, so um, if we haven't got anybody else who wants to come in and give their two cents, then I think we've gone, we've reached the two hour. Mark for the the to our mark for the for the, the stream. So oh, I've got ten minutes left. Well, whatever. Um, thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. I will take this opportunity to do a quick announcement. We are going to be having a tournament on March twelfth. It's going to be a PC Dominion Conquest tournament. So it's going to be the same format as the last tournament that we streamed on the dojo, which is. Whereas if you win a match with one character, you, your char your team can't play that character again, and you have to pick a new composition. Um, except it won't be in Testing Ground Dominions, because as far as I'm aware, there's no Testing Ground in March. Um, maybe if there is, <laughs> then I'll have to eat my words, but I don't think there is. So uh, join us for that. I will be putting up an announcement and a sign-up page and all that good stuff. Um, pardon me, soon? No account sharing. Nope. No account sharing, although there won't be an age limit, so you won't have to worry about that. Um, but yes, please don't, don't share accounts. Um, I guess, like I said, I don't think there's any, any reason why you'd want to, but yeah. Uh, yeah, that all happened, and then that's going to be PC, but there will be, in, there will be future tournaments that are going to be for consoles as well. So I'm planning on doing after... Uh, I'm, I'd love to hear everybody's feedback as well on what the kind of things they want, but I would like to, after this, do a series of duels tournaments on all three platforms. So that'll probably be sometime after, so probably in what's probably in April. Um, my life is going to get very, pretty busy about that time because I have a wedding to plan, but uh, there will still be uh, some more things. It's coming on. So yeah, keep your eyes peeled. Thank you very much for joining us. And I think that's all from us today. Anyone want to say any last words before we go? I'm good. All thanks good. for having me. Oh, thanks for coming along. Thank you very much, uh, Rippy and Alexander, for all your comments. Nash also was in here earlier, so big thanks, thanks to you. Uh, yeah, have a good time. Right. Bye. Bye-bye.